Silence, tears and waiting have become the daily reality for 70-year-old Anna and her daughter-in-law Natalia. Holding on to the hope of one day being reunited with their loved ones that have been missing since the early days of the war in Ukraine. Anna has three daughters and one son, but one of her daughters died at the age of 43 from an incurable illness. Despite being displaced from their homes and living in a constant state of fear and panic, the disappearance of her son, Mikolai, is what causes her the most pain. On <laughs> І в 9 годин ранку і не не повернулись додому. З пасинком пішли і не повернулися додому. А ми виїжджали з внучками, я виїжджала, ми 18. Natalia has been married to Mikola for 10 years. She has a 27-year-old son, Valery, from her first marriage, who also disappeared along with Mikola. Based on the information she received from authorities, her son and husband were taken hostage by Russian forces. A neighbor also saw Valerie appear on Russian television alongside other war prisoners. Зробив всім каву, бо ж треба було костер розпалювати, щоб зробити ту каву. Ми всі проснулись, син проснувся, я проснулась, кава вже була готова. Було десь пів дев'ятої. Ми попили каву. І Коля каже, ну, ми будемо йти до корови. А в сторони Гостомеля їхало дуже багато техніки, було дуже шумно. Я кажу, не треба і вам сьогодні йти туди, тому що дуже багато техніки їде. Каже, а ми з Валеркою швидко зробимо, справимося і прийдемо додому. Mikola also has two daughters from his first marriage. He was a company security guard and tirelessly went to work every day. When he was at home, he helped his mother and wife with everything that he could. Valery worked at a local gas station and is known for being a spontaneous person. They lived in the village of Blistavice, in the city of Bucha, around 30 kilometers from the capital of Kiev. 
Before the Russian invasion of Ukraine in late February, the village had a population of around 1,200 people. Once the war began, almost half the population left the village. With the departure of Russian troops in late March, six villagers, including Mykola and Valery, disappeared, with rumors claiming that they were kidnapped by Russian troops. The family live in the same garden with two separate houses. Mikola was born in the very same house and refused to leave because of the war. He used to help his mother with taking care of the garden every day, but now Natalia does everything alone. Every day, Anna tries to go about her day, doing different chores and activities in an attempt to stop worrying about her boys. She lives in the same house as her two granddaughters, aged 14 and 17. Дітки появились, на роботу ходила, в столовий робила. У Чорнобильській там ми жили з першим чоловіком. Потім не склало життя, він почав руки простягати до мене. Я почала то саме переїхала до мами. Тато помер, я переїхала. Хочу одне, щоб син повернувся. Більш нічого не хочу. The situation is more difficult for Natalia, who is worrying for both her husband and her son. For three days after their disappearance, she desperately searched in the forest nearby, hoping to find them, but to no avail. A week later, she alerted the police, six months on, and their whereabouts still remain unknown. Natalia came to visit her neighbor's house, the last place her son and husband were seen. The owner had fled, leaving behind a cow and a dog in early March. Mikola was the one who was in charge of taking care of them until they returned. Mikola and Valerie checked on the animals every few days, and on March 21st they came, as usual, to feed them, but were never seen again. Mm. 
21 березня, в тот день, когда они зникли, вечером 5 часов. Тут была такая обстановка, тут соседей нигде никого не было. Natalia met 60-year-old Olena at the police station while looking for their husbands. Olena's husband, whose name is also Mikola, is 65 years old and is a retired police officer. Olena moved to Lviv in early March, but Mikola stayed at home to take care of his elderly aunt and mother. Olena does not want to show us pictures of her husband out of fear of Russian forces. We call the police, but there is no answer. Доброго дня. Добрий день, що сталося? Що сталося? Я дзвонила десь неділю тому, я мій чоловік у полоні. І у мене є свідчення, що він на зв'язок, тому що вас дуже погано чутно. Алло. Да. Ви чуєте мене зараз? Алло. Ну, вони мене не чують. Olena has two sons, both of whom are on the battlefield. In one instant, she was separated from the men in her life and is now living out of her pension worth 300 US dollars. We go to visit Olena's husband, Mikola's mother, a 93-year-old woman with vivid memories of the Second World War. She says the German forces treated people much better than the Russians currently are doing. Throughout the time of the Russian troops being in the village, the dogs guarded the old woman and woke her as soon as anyone came. On February 24th, when Russian forces invaded Ukraine, most of the towns and villages of Kiev province were taken under control. At that time, only 3,700 people remained out of the 60,000 inhabitants of Bucha and the 14 villages in the city. The bodies of around 450 people were recovered and the search for others continues. Bucha and the villages nearby have become a symbol of the tragedies of this war. Anna and hundreds of others have been waiting since 5 a.m. to receive their rations. She had never had to earn her living this way before. Her pension and her son's salary covered their living expenses. I spoke to the people who were there until 10 o'clock when the center opened. 
Destruction, loneliness and separation from their children or other relatives are common stories. The World Food Center has bases in all cities of Ukraine and distributes food rations twice a month to those in need. They are so poor that they do not have so much money to survive right now. This is how. Anna receives her rations and returns home. Growing crops in her garden also helps to make enough food for a month. The situation had never been so difficult for them before the war began. Every day, after drinking her coffee and watching the latest news about the war, Natalia goes to a clothing factory from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. She had never worked before, but given the current situation, she has to make a living. According to statistics on missing persons collected by the Ukrainian police directorate, 25,000 people have gone missing since the beginning of the war, 12,000 of whom have been found by the police, but 13,000 are still missing. Так, так і така інформація надходить, але знову ж розумієте, вона потребує завжди перевірки, тому що є факти і багато різних діячів на своїх сторінках в інтернеті викладають відомості про таку кількість, яких захоплені мапривають в колоні, або яких вивезли промислово депортували на територію Російської Федерації. Кількість у кожної різна. Ми можемо говорити тільки про ті факти, які безпосередні. Those who remained in shelters, towns and villages during the war paid a heavy price. Like hundreds of others, Lyudmila and her husband were reluctant to leave the home they had built together for 47 years. They thought the war would end soon, so they hid in the shelter of their house. But only six days after the arrival of Russian troops, they killed her husband, kicked her out, and turned their house into a base. Although the attacks have ended in northern Ukraine and people are looking to rebuild their lives, fighting continues in the east and in the south. With most cities such as Mariupol, Luhansk and Zaporizhia under Russian control. Ninety percent of those living in the Russian-controlled territories speak Russian. <coughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin wants to make Donbas part of Russia, as in 2014, when Crimea became part of the country with 96 percent of a contested referendum vote. When Russia came in and invaded Ukraine, and said that everyone that is Russian speaking supposedly wants to be in Russia, the Russian speakers said, wait a second, no, we don't want to be part of Russia. We want to be Ukrainian. And wait a minute, language matters. And so people are starting to shift their language practices.
In northern Ukraine, we cross 490 kilometers towards Kharkiv. Bombing continues here. Eight people have been killed in a single rocket attack in central Kharkiv in a day. Fear of attacks has driven people into shelters, and as darkness falls, their misery grows. shelter is under an iron-crushing factory. Twelve people live here, mostly from villages in Kharkiv province, receiving food daily from humanitarian organizations. Olena and Eugene from the village of Baradyanka had their own homes and lived a peaceful life in their village. But now they go to clean up the bombed areas every day in order to earn money. Their son is two months old and they leave him with their relatives every day. They left the village at 6 a.m. when the fighting started and do not know how long they will have to wait to return. Despite the continuous fighting and bombings, people are living their normal lives. Two months later, we returned to Bucha. The ruins remain. We find Lyudmila at her home. She has lost 12 pounds and the memory of her husband has made her face seem even older. Lyudmila has a daughter and son who live in one of their friends' houses. So she is forced to stay in temporary camps set up by the Polish government in Bucha and in some towns in Kiev province. The camps consist of 88 rooms and about 250 people live in each camp. Lyudmila goes to her room, where six other people are also staying. This is not how she imagined she would be living her retirement years. Every night before going to bed, Anna listens to the news, hoping to hear that the war is over and that her son is back. But there is no good news for her. There has been only one prisoner exchange between Russia and Ukraine in recent months. And there is still no news from the police.
The war between Ukraine and Russia changed the lives of many people in both countries, and the dreams of many were buried along with the bodies during a war with no end in sight. Still, it is the beginning of life for many who want to write a new story for this country amid war and destruction. We, of course, want victory. We want to have all our territories remain the same as they were, and to have, so to speak, our choice respected. И путь развития, который мы выбрали для нашей страны, чтобы никем не 